Hello everyone, this is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. This particular video is an update on my recent videos and articles on IBM where I talked about it being significantly undervalued. But most importantly, this video is going to focus on why I believe the recent announcement of the acquisition of Red Hat was actually done by IBM, actually by both companies, at a fair or reasonable price relative to how the market has typically valued Red Hat. But before I get into Red Hat, I want to talk a little bit about IBM. IBM has a tremendous dividend growth record. As you can see here, they've grown their dividend for going on 20 years in a row now by an average rate of 15% a year. Last year, I will admit, they only grew up by 7 and 10% the year prior to that. But as you can see by this white line, the dividend growth has been tremendous. Now, obviously, the orange line on this graph represents earnings, and earnings, this is operating earnings, earnings have been weak over the course of the last five or six years. If I run this as a nine-year graph, you can see earnings growth has actually averaged less than 1%. But I want to make a very strong point here. Earnings are growing, even though they're growing very slowly right now. And earnings are expected to continue to grow, although at a very low rate, maybe 1% or 2%. But my point is, even a no-growth stock is worth 15 times earnings, in my opinion. And I believe IBM is clearly worth at least a significantly higher multiple than the market's currently providing it. But as I stated in all my articles I've written recently on IBM, I'm buying this company primarily for its dividend income. So I want to look at operating cash flow per share. Operating cash flow is more than adequately covering the dividend and has been in IBM's case for a long time. But more to the point, if I go to free cash flow, which is what's left over after running the business, free cash flow is more than covering the dividend. And if I shorten the time frame here, free cash flow is staying steady. It's growing at less than 1%, but it's staying steady. The company's free cash flow per share is not collapsing. And therefore, I believe the dividend still remains intact. So I think IBM is a very inexpensive stock. And if I were to price this stock at what I would consider to be reasonable valuations, and this is a real strong point, I believe the company does have have problems, but I believe the price is significantly discounting the actual value of IBM. If IBM were to trade at a normal P.E. ratio of 15, which is common for the average company, especially an A-rated Stellar, and I will point out Standard & Poor's did just lower the rating from A plus to A, but it still has a high investment grade rating. But at 15 times earnings, this company would generate annualized rates of return of 37% out to 2020, and it would be, you know, in less than or just slightly over a year, it'd be over 70% annualized. So there's a lot of upside in IBM. Now, recently, the stock has been trading at a lower valuation. So I'm using the normal PE, which recently for the last five years has been around 11. That still gives me an opportunity to make over 30% a year annualized by the end of next year and over 20% a year annualized by 2020. And I feel very confident now that these are going to happen. Now, keep in mind, the Red Hat acquisition is not going to close for about a year. The real question is, what's going to happen to future IBM's earnings after the Red Hat acquisition is made? But I want to go ahead and talk about Red Hat a little bit and give you some insights into why I think IBM did not overpay for the stock. And that's the conventional wisdom right now. A lot of investors and even professionals are lamenting that IBM dramatically overpaid for Red Hat. So the first thing I want to do is look at Red Hat from a historical growth perspective. And as you can see, the company's earnings growth has been very consistent and at a very high rate. It's averaged almost 27% earnings growth year after year. Even through the Great Recession, the company grew their business. They did have one down year coming out of the recession in 2010. And by the way, their fiscal year is in February. But otherwise, this company has been a really great growth story. But I want you to notice that the market has historically always put a premium valuation on this stock. So to IBM's credit, and perhaps Red Hat shareholders credit, there's no way in the world IBM could have bought this company cheap because the market always values it at a high rate. But here's where I think it gets really interesting. Two primary ways I like to value stocks are with options operating earnings and EBITDA. Now, I look at all these other metrics. I look at diluted earnings. And by the way, diluted earnings with Red Hat, there's not a lot of accounting convention here. Their diluted earnings growth has also been very consistent and high. And the market, again, has applied a very high valuation to their gap or diluted earnings. So, you know, no matter how you look at it, Red Hat is a company that the market has put a high valuation on relative to its earnings power. But let's look at EBITDA, because this is where I think it gets interesting. The 
market has historically priced this stock at a normal price to EBITDA of about 42. If I calculated based on forecasts for next year's EBITDA growth for Red Hat, this is without the IBM acquisition, by February of 2019, which is their fiscal year end, a 42 EBITDA valuation would value Red Hat at $217.68 a share. And by the way, this is when the announcement was made. The stock has now rallied to about 170 plus a share, which is moving towards alignment. It's still a discount to the $190 that IBM is allegedly paying for them. But if I go back into forecasting calculators and again, look at this normal price to EBITDA of 42, then by year end 2019, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of when this acquisition is expected to close, it's going to take about a year, you've got a 37% rate of return or a stock that would be worth $245 a share based on this normal price to EBITDA. And keep in mind that IBM is paying $1.90 a share. So if I go to the $190 a share area, I'll try to find it here. You know, it's going to be somewhere between these two metrics, 30, 29 to 33 times EBITDA, which is a significant discount to its EBITDA. Now, just so I'm clear, I'm not saying that this was a bargain. This is a fully priced investment. IBM bought this company, in my view, at a fair price relative to how the market has historically valued the stock. So if they were going to purchase this company, they had to pay a multiple very similar to what they did. So I think they've unlocked some value out of Red Hat based on price to EBITDA. I think they're going to acquire it at a fair price. Now the jury's out. Is this going to be a great acquisition for IBM slash and Red Hat as a combined team? Is the open source cloud products that Red Hat brings to IBM going to help them reinvigorate their growth and generate it? Is it also going to help Red Hat's internal business um, be able to grow as well? The jury's still out on that, but I have a great deal of confidence that the management teams of both of these companies know a lot more about IT and about their businesses than the average Joe out there, including yours truly. So I'm going to give management the benefit of the doubt here and say, hey, this may be a really great acquisition for IBM, and I believe it was done at a very fair or reasonable price price relative to how Red Hat has normally been valued by the marketplace. It's a different perspective than most have right now, but you can clearly see here that it makes sense. I am not making this number up. I want to close by saying that this is simply a formula that was applied attempting to determine what value the market has typically applied. And the orange line on this graph is a price to EBITDA of 42. And you can see that that price to EBITDA of 42 has really been the standard valuation for this company over this long period of time going back to 2005, actually going back longer than that. The 42 EBITDA has been the standard for how the market has priced this stock. So I hope this gives you a little different perspective of whether or not IBM made a reasonable valuation offer to Red Hat or not. You know, of course, you'd be your own judge. But anyway, if you liked what you saw here and are interested in learning more about Fast Graphs, go ahead, email us at the email on this page or give us a call. We'd love to talk to you. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. This has been Chuck Carnival saying thanks for watching.